Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We are coming at you from the Hunt Expo at the Ruger Marlin booth, and I am with Dustin Diefenderfer, the founder of Mountain Tough Fitness and um, super fangirl over here of your guys' <laughs> program. And like, I, we've never met in person, and when you walked up, I was like, oh, that's him. <laughs> like, welcome to the Swole Club. Like, you <laughs> literally live your program and. Uh, Gosh, you're doing such a great job with it. Like, Thank you. It's changing lives. Like one of my cameramen is like totally obsessed with you, and it has like transformed me from being the Peloton lady into now I'm Mountain Tough. So <laughs> <laughs> it's been a transition. I know we say sometimes we want to be the Peloton for badass people. Yes. And it's, yes. It's so much fun. It's yeah. a lot of fun. It is fun. And yeah. well, I mean, I don't know. We're gonna rip right into Peloton. Sorry, but. Um, <laughs> I, I really liked that program when I was like not in as good of shape mm -hmm. because it was a lot easier. The intensity was a lot less. But now that I'm like getting in much better shape and better physical condition, like I like your workouts. They challenge me more. They're harder. The duration is longer. And I feel like they're obviously tailored to what we're doing in the backcountry. Yep. And um, the other workouts maybe aren't as much, obviously, uh, like different, a little bit different market or genre. Yeah. Um, so that's what makes you guys really different from everybody else. That's kind of how it started too. So Mountain Tough started off, my background was a Montana kid, lifelong backcountry elk hunter. And then I became like through college and after college a gym rat. And I was really into lifting, but I was in a friend group of wildland firefighters and hot yeah. shots. And so all of our lifting was still predominantly focused for the backcountry and yeah. being better in the backcountry. And then that led me to like marathon running and ultra marathon running. And at first I Wait, thought... Wait, how far have you ran? Like what's the ultra that you've done? Mine, 100? Mine were the 50s. Okay. So yeah, I, did, I didn't ever, ever go past that. But I did notice that like too much cardio is not necessarily helpful in the backcountry, yeah. especially well, when you I, have to pack something out. You did a podcast where you talked about you had ran an ultra and you thought, I'm just going to crush elk season this year. Yeah. And in your podcast, you described it being your hardest elk season. It was the worst pack out I've ever had, which was <laughs> eye opening because I thought it was going to be an amazing, amazing experience because when you train for ultras in montana a lot of times you're running in the mountains Elevation. you're gonna be hunting in yeah the same ranges yeah. but when you lose enough muscle mass the heavy pack outs are pretty brutal and so cardio is not wife's the a marathon runner right she is yeah yeah, yeah. and still yeah well it's yeah. not not so much anymore she's got into the high rocks events high rocks is like this they're calling it the world fit the world series of fitness racing and a high rocks they're trying to really test you as a hybrid athlete so hybrid athlete is this newer term of can you be really good at strength and really good at cardio at the same time? And they're crazy. So cool she's events. an animal. She's an animal. Yeah. That's she's a crazy. beast. Yeah. That's great. So because you were doing all of these things, you realized that you had to have like this middle ground, yeah. not necessarily being a diehard gym rat. So we're, when you were saying like, you do describe yourself as a high diehard gym rat, were you like powerlifting? Were you doing bodybuilding? What were you doing? It was mostly, in that time of my life, it was mostly a bodybuilding type workout. 
a lot of bodybuilding type. So workout. like low reps, hot heavy weights, training to failure, that sort of thing. Yeah, and the light bulb moment was after that worst pack out. It was very obvious that that was in 2016, and no one in the country was specifically training the backcountry hunter, and all other like elite sporting agencies, the military. So like NFL, NHL, MLB, and all of the military special operations groups are going to train their people for very specific missions. Yes. And backcountry hunting is a very specific mission that requires like a certain set of skills, but no one was training to that mission. And so that's where that real light bulb moment happened is like, wow, this is a great opportunity for someone to build programming for this exact person. Yeah. No, and that's really, that's interesting because you're right. You can't, you have to have cardio Mm -hmm. and you have to have strength. You have to have both. You can't just be strong in one or the other and really excel. And, And I just found that fascinating as a consumer of of your of one of your podcasts you had done where you were like man i i thought i would just be running up and down the mountain and you were just wrecked from it and yeah you went from being like so confident heading into a season and then just realizing how you'd been training was really not really preparing you for what you were physically doing yeah it's wild a lot i think a lot of like a lot of listeners on your show probably are aware but like generally in the public of our country a lot of people aren't aware of how demanding like a heavy pack out is yeah so even on like a medium difficulty level hunt up to like a really gnarly backcountry hunt you're gonna if you're solo or with one friend or a couple friends on a archery elk hunt yeah you're gonna have those 400 pound loads to get off the mountain and if you're three four five seven miles back and how much elevation loss and gain. Yeah. How many times you going up and down. It's unique. It's unique to compared to any other sport yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll really like, I know the first time I put on a heavy pack and I did a backpack hunt was in 2012 because I've always had horses and mules. And Aaron Snyder from Kafaro set me up with a pack and I took it and I had 55 pounds strapped to my back. And at that time, I was doing a lot of competitive figure. Mm -hmm. So I was in good shape. I was lean, and I was strong. Um, But I remember the first time I had that much weight on me, and I was packing in for a 13-day sheep hunt, which I wasn't sheep hunting. Let me just clarify that. (laughs) I could not afford the sheep hunt. I was just going along to, like, have a cool experience. Yeah. And I was blessed with the opportunity to go. And I put that weight on, and I remember I kind of translated it back to, like, the first time you saddle a horse— and you go to, you put weight on them, you know, their inclination at first is to maybe like buck or like get this off of me. Like this is foreign. <laughs> and like, I felt like that when I put that heavy pack on, I was like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, like I'm in great shape, but this doesn't feel right. Like this feels foreign. And it was really hard. Like that first, that first like mile or two miles was straight ascent Mm -hmm. and I'm like all right like (laughs) this is gonna take me but once I got used to the weight then it was okay like my brain had to acclimate and realize you know I might need help standing up but once I got stood up I was okay like I had the muscles to do it but it, it is a foreign feeling when you put that much weight on if you're not used to it and going and yeah. having that endurance. It's really eye-opening to a lot of people have that same yeah. experience because most people haven't done that or trained that way. And it's interesting too because it, for a lot of people that's going to happen late into the hunt. So the mountain has already beat them up for yes. three or four or five days. And so the most difficult task of the trip is the pack is going to happen on the tail end of the yeah. trip. When you're most fatigued. When you're very fatigued and low on fuel a lot of people aren't getting enough calories each day in the back country dehydrated tired low on sleep and then that's when you're going to have to perform the biggest effort yeah yeah we had that a couple years ago the dehydration thing my husband started to bonk on us pretty good and it's like (laughs) it does you're right i mean that's when it happens it's at the end of the hunt your last pack out your last whatever and that's where it's the hardest you know you're you're low on everything and that's when you have to have the best out of your body Mm -hmm. so you you went from being like okay i'm gonna 
I have to see this gap in the industry, in the market, and I have the ability to fill this. So how did this all come together? It's pretty amazing. It's like an American dream bootstrap story for sure. And when I started, it was about as bootstrappy as you could get. So I drew the logo on a piece of paper just with pen, sent it to a graphic design buddy, and he turned it into an actual logo. But Mountain Tough started in Bozeman just with a flyer I hung at the bow shop. And the flyer said, looking to train backcountry hunters, and then it had the new Mountain Tough logo. But it was like the flyer where you tear off the phone number. Oh. Like a puppy we for sale flyer. We were that long ago. Yeah. Okay. And three guys called, and I started training them in the park behind my house because we didn't have a gym or anything yeah. yet at that time. But right away, like the backbone principles to Mountain Tough were, one was not only were we going to physically prepare people to thrive in the backcountry, yeah. but part of doing that was we were going to make them extremely mentally tough. Yeah. Because mental toughness is really what's separating the people that are accomplishing their goals right. from the folks that are not. So mental toughness was always our backbone. And then the second thing is anything we were going to do, we were going to test ourselves. And we were always going to test things, get them right before we launched them out to the public. And so that whole first year, it was a lot of training groups of people in the park. And it went from three guys to... Um, like 20 individuals and then I had three park classes a day I do mountain tough in the park morning noon and night so you're like a boot camp guy at yeah first. it was a boot camp thing like when I first. lived in Orange County I'm imagining <laughs> the boot camp I used to go to in the park yeah it's wild <laughs> that was you yeah that's awesome and then winter was coming in Bozeman that first year and, and you so had I got knew I, need, I needed a gym and so we leased a gym for the first couple of years and it was at the end of that first year that I assembled really the team for Mountain Tough. And that was definitely a game changer because for the mental toughness backbone, I knew like special operations was going to have some of the best tools for that. So then we brought a army ranger, Lieutenant Colonel onto our team. And then we bought, brought a Montana kid that just got home from the SEAL teams onto our team. And at the end of that year after the park sessions with those two individuals on the team, it's like, all right, let's build a plan to take this online. Yeah. So we took it Mountain Tough Online in 2017, and it was one program, and you bought that program for life. And so it was Mountain Tough preseason prep training, and you bought it once, and then you owned that program for life, and it was all delivered through a website so it was all video based like it is now mm -hmm. but now it's so much different in the it's app. It's very sophisticated. Yeah the app has come a long way since those days but when we launched in when we took it digital in 2017 and pushed it out it was really cool because it was kind of like the market was sitting there waiting for it to exist. Yeah. Because so many people had been in the backcountry and had had terrible experiences where they were stuck in their tent or they couldn't get out of their tent because yeah. they were so sore. A lot of people had bonked on the mountain. Yeah. And then a lot of people were just intimidated yeah. to come out west. But no one had ever provided like a step-by-step -step plan. And that was what we did. And it really took off from there. You guys, if you're like me, you are totally dependent on OnX Hunt for nearly everything from hunting, navigating backcountry roads, even real estate. But being an elite member with OnX has so many benefits that you guys are going to want to take advantage of if you're not already doing so. For example, you're going to have access to all 50 states plus Canada with tons of valuable resource, landowner information, and you're also going to get added benefits like draw odds with top ret that will help you with all of your application seasons and benefits through hunting full magazine and to boot you guys they've got tons of great specials through partners like silencer central where if you're an on x elite member you really benefit from those partnerships so if you guys aren't a member i encourage you go online to the on hunt website use code wild 20 at checkout and you're going to save 20 percent you're going to love being an Onyx Hunt Elite member.
Yeah. I, uh, that step-by-step -step plan is, is something I really appreciate. So <clears throat> to guys, like fast forward a little bit, like their program is so sophisticated. Um, they have like week long programs you could subscribe to from full gym equipment to body weight only to minimal gear to kettlebells only. And they have an on-ramp. So like, I mean, people might look at you and be like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die if I do this because <laughs> this is like legit workouts. But you guys have an on-ramp program too. So it takes a lot of intimidation out of signing up too. So mm -hmm. like, hey, you're gonna on-ramp week one, it's three workouts. And we're going to break you in kind of slowly, get your muscles acclimated to the movements, figure out the fundamentals, like what is our range of motion, what is the expectation, and then we're going to bring it up in week two, week three. And so you guys, ha they have like these really killer programs where you can like work at your own pace, work in your own gym, be wherever you want. Like, I mean, I can be in Europe and doing the workouts wherever. Yeah. Um, but it's like you're building on skill sets and you're building on on strength and then you're kind of tracking it and it, it's really awesome. Yeah, that's been big for us because we did start with just kind of one elite level program. Yeah. And as we matured as a company, we added a lot to get people from point A to point B yeah. and B to C. So we added a lot of that on-ramp style, yeah. the beginner style, the intermediate. And so there's... After on-ramp, people go into a foundation program, yep. and then they can go on their path from there. And it's been, like, one of the coolest things we've ever done because at first I had this vision of it being really hardcore, but I realized that, like, everyone's starting at a different, different point. Different place. And the more people that we can get on great backcountry experiences, yeah. the better. Because there's no way to really, like, change your life more effectively than to just like go four days in the back country with with limited cell phone yeah. service and the life change that can happen for people that have never done that mm -hmm. and getting them comfortable and ready to do that has been awesome and so the on-ramp program also allows people to start really safely so that there's no injuries mm -hmm. so someone who hasn't trained or hasn't trained in the last like 10 years starting them safely and then getting them into the fundamentals and then getting them on their journey from there has been awesome yeah and what i like about it is you can work at your own pace and even some of your guys's workouts like today i did a kettlebell workout and i didn't have a pull-up bar mm -hmm. so instead i kind of improvised and did my own thing and that's fine i could still keep you know keep along the same pace and, and improvise and and i'd learned some other things from your guys's program or other work, work exercises i was like well, i'll just do these instead because i don't have a pull-up bar or whatever and so that's the nice thing about it too is like you're not well if you don't have this you can't do the program it yeah. really works for everyone it's been really interesting because when we started all the mountain tough programming was gym based yeah so like squat racks and barbells and it got really popular and our customers started asking us like this is great but what do i do when i travel that's right and so we built the 30 30 which is the mountain tough body weight program so it's 30 days of body weight only training and we built that specifically for, for travelers for travelers and then right after it was built covid hit and COVID like changed the game on how oh, Americans yeah. train. Well, and then you couldn't get fitness equipment anyway during COVID, even yeah. if you wanted to like invest in a home gym. Like it was the absolute worst time to try to buy gym equipment was during COVID. You couldn't find it. And if you could, exist. the prices were ridiculous. Insane. Yeah, yeah. So thirty thirty took off, and then we continued to add to that. So we went thirty thirty two point oh, no gear sixty. But really, what happened is a lot of people started training at home through COVID, like 70% of Americans moved to train at home. Mm -hmm. But then most people found that they actually like training with minimal gear at home and basement and garage gyms I, more that's than me. a I gym. don't like going to a gym. Yeah. Yeah. So people stuck with it. Yeah. Well, it's a time thing. You know, I got to go to the gym and I got to uh, leave the house. And for me, I'd rather just like we got a you know little gym at home and I've got a bike and a elliptical and I've got weights and you know some kettlebells and it's efficient it, yeah, yeah I mean it schedule. works for me and then with when I travel I you know I tried really hard this year to bring dumbbells with me mm -hmm. and I did like on my whitetail hunts this fall I'd sit in a tree dark to dark and then I was doing dumbbell workouts at night and yeah even if it's just half an hour 
is better than doing nothing. Or like you say, body weight workouts, whatever. There's, there's, you know, you guys are building an end where everybody can be doing something, and um, and you're doing such a great job at it. Like the the workouts are awesome, and like I said, if you are ready to step it up. You have the program for that, but then also if you're a super beginner, you have the program for that too. Yeah, everyone's covered now from beginner to intermediate to elite, and then from no gear at all, all the way up to full gear. There is like a, a plethora of options in the app now. And the app the app has changed the game because it's fully native on iPhone, Android, all yeah. the smart TVs. And then it also allowed us to really push like the limits on I believe like you've tried the minimal gear daily, yeah. which is that one's pushed live in the app every 24 hours. So it's a brand new workout every single day mm -hmm. and it expires every night and the fear of missing out. It's, it's kind of replicating those early days. Like if you were going to miss a mountain tough class, you were like, man, I wonder what everyone did today. And then you're kind of bummed that you didn't even get to see what everyone did. And so mm -hmm. the minimal gear daily has become our most popular product yeah. now. It's just taken off because it's brand new every day. It's fully coached. Mm -hmm. All you'd have to do is hit play. It's easy. And then there's two other athletes to kind of benchmark off mm -hmm. of. It's been awesome. Yeah, no, that's the one I've been doing. And then I did the kettlebell one today just yeah. to try something kind of different. Because the gym I was in today had a little variety of kettlebells. I was like, well, I'm going to do something something different and I, and it's nice just to kind of mix it up anyway and what you know what you're doing and um so let's back it up you have all these great programs it's all on your phone you can be anywhere in the world gear no gear in a gym whatever back it up to like you talk a lot about the mental component yeah. right and and like I get it in the back country we I like to call it type two fun yeah so like at the time you're like oh my gosh you might be miserable or cold or exhausted and you're not having maybe fun in the moment. <laughs> you're mm -hmm. like surviving. And then afterwards, when you come out, you look back and you're like, man, that was epic shit. Like yeah. we did that and yeah. that is so badass. And I can't wait for next year to do it again. Mm -hmm. And this, that is like a different type of mental fitness, right? Like keeping going, not quitting, persevering. How are you, how did you figure out a way to incorporate that into what you're doing with Mountain Tough? Like that mindset when conditions get tough on a mountain hunt your gear must be tougher making every opportunity count means selecting equipment that will not fail any condition anywhere Hornady Outfitter ammunition is designed to perform available in a wide range of cartridges from 243 to 375 Ruger when you're looking for a hard-hitting deep penetrating bullet and cartridge that performs in the most rugged environments. Look no further than Hornady Outfitter Ammunition. Yeah, so m mental fitness is everything. It's so important and I think it is not only going to carry over into the back country, but it's also building and working on mental fitness is yeah. going to carry over into every single aspect of life. And we think about it at Mountain Tough from the perspective of well, life is supposed to be hard. It's not supposed to be easy. easy. And change, but there's the comfort crisis. Yeah. Yeah. The comfort crisis, the comfort is, crisis, a crisis is a true problem. The comfort crisis is a thing. Yeah. Yes. So, like, thinking of it from the perspective of life is not supposed to be easy. It's su supposed to be hard. Just making that mindset shift in people's perspective goes a long ways. Because then when hard things do come along, people are expecting them. They're ready for them. And it's not going to knock them over. They're going to bounce right back yeah. up. And so we work on that from a lot of different angles. We look in the programming the way that we do a lot of it is turning ceilings into floors. And so you'll see that analogy like used a lot with someone, someone who's never ran like a half marathon. Once they run a half marathon, it, se it seemed impossible to them and then they do it. And then that half marathon now becomes their new floor mm -hmm. when it used to be their ceiling. 
and then they'll go to a full marathon after that a lot of times because they continue to push those boundaries. Mm -hmm. So in our programming, we're always looking for ways to push you a little bit harder than you really probably think you're capable of or taking you like one more round or one more rep than you probably wanted to go mm -hmm. and just continuing to turn those ceilings into floors, adding um, like competition elements mm -hmm. and elements where there might be like a fake finish where you thought you were done, but you're really not done. Programming in the fitness side, all those little components we're using to build your mindset. And then in addition into the app, we have like just straight up mindset curriculum also so the app is very holistic and where we're trying to take care of everyone physically but also mentally spiritually and nutritionally because it is like it's like these stools that we're sitting on right now that if one leg of this stool is physical and one is mental and then one is spiritual and one's nutritional they're all important yeah and one can't be strong in the other's weak this stool's still going to fall over so you see that a lot where someone might be extremely um, mentally strong but they've lost their like physical edge and they're going to struggle or someone might be they might have like the perfect diet but not the perfect training and they're still going to struggle so all these things are working together to really like transform someone's life and that's what we see the most at mountain tough we we have a big goal to change a hundred thousand lives by mm -hmm. 2026 mm -hmm. and most of that is happening from the mindset changes even though we're a fitness brand we're a fitness app most of the life change is happening in the mind between the ears yeah. which is so amazing because a lot of what goes on is someone, they sign up because they want to be ready for that uh, Colorado elk hunt. And that's what got them to sign up mm -hmm. because they were scared of that trip or nervous for that trip or they wanted to be very prepared for yeah. that trip. But people end up being like better husbands, better fathers, better mothers, um, better workers, employees, friends, because all these positive snowballs start building on top of themselves so i think it's it's that holistic point of view rooted in the fact that like our mind is our greatest weapon is really what drives that positive change mm -hmm. no and i that it is it's it's so true because showing up is half the battle mm -hmm. and if you make an excuse and you don't show up your mind has already beat your body right? yeah like you have to overcome that and you know, it's like with what we do, you know, hunting full time in the fall, man, I've got the greatest job in the world. I'm so blessed. Every day I get to wake up and go in the back country and I'm out and I'm doing amazing things, climbing mountains. But when you have a cold or the flu mm -hmm. and you still get up and go, go out. I mean, I was, I was in South Africa hunting and I was COVID and very borderline going to the hospital, like very, very ill. And I, my husband was like begging me not to go out and hunt. And I was like, man, I, I'm i here to do a job. I have so many days here. Mm -hmm. Everybody in camp already has COVID. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm gonna go yeah. because I can't afford to spend a day in bed because I'm here to, to, to you know, hunt. Yeah. And you have to get up. Like, and that was the sickest I've ever been. Um, like almost crying like I was coughing so hard and I was so sick that like yeah Yogi was like you need to go to the doctor and luckily I got a telemed and I got medication there that I wouldn't have gotten here man um and I did come out of it it took me a long time um but I still didn't stop and that was probably why I got really really sick <laughs> anyway but I was the sickest person there but I mean it doesn't matter whether you're sick like that or you have a head cold or whatever I mean you still you've so much time your season is so finite and for me i can't mm -hmm. make an excuse so whether i hurt or i'm tired or whatever it is i have to overcome that and go i mean whether it's i mean it can be the smallest thing like your feet hurting yeah like, i don't know like i've watched um cory jacobson's elk hunt from alaska the a couple alaska years ago where his insane. feet were shredded yeah off his body pretty much i'm like i've never had anything that bad but talk about the toughness you have to have 
to endure, like the stuff that we're doing at home to train is minuscule in comparison of some of the things that we encounter out yeah. there. Yeah. Like, you know, like <laughs> my first sheet plant, like I was telling you, the, you know, putting that pack on, but knowing once we hiked all the way out, like the only way I was getting out of there was to hike back where I started the same way all the way back and yeah. you know to the pickup spot and like there you can't have an excuse you have to go yeah like whether you feel like it or not whether it's snowing or raining or i mean you have to overcome that so i think a lot of it starts at home with the mental aspect which is so important like even if you don't feel like it set your freaking alarm and get up you have to do hard things you have to do hard things and it's not easy it's not fun it's not sexy um like I have been the last year, you know, I was super competitive. Well, I was super fat as a kid. And then I went through a phase in life where I was super competitive as, as an athlete. And mm. then I hit my 40s. I got married and I went on a, a tour day dining experience and <laughs> ate and drank a lot. I put on a lot of weight. And then last year I left the trade show seasons and I was like, man, I got to make a change. Mm -hmm. And I can't do this anymore. So I quit drinking. I started, you know, monitoring my, my food really like I was when I was bodybuilding yeah. and not making excuses anymore. And I think part of it too, for a lot of people is you get so out of shape um, and you get so far from feeling or being fit that it hurts really bad. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want to do it. It's not fun to show up when you hurt. And I, I like this last summer, I would do my Peloton workouts and my husband would be like, gosh, Christy, um, why do you lift so much? Like the weights are too heavy. You can't walk for three or four <laughs> days afterwards. Like you need to stop putting so much so weight sore. on. Like you need to like not do it this because in my mind, I'm still an athlete. So I'm still pushing myself and then I couldn't walk for four days. And so I get like, it is mentally hard, but you have to make that choice every day mm -hmm. and stop making the excuse. Yeah. And, and yeah, okay. Food tastes great no matter where you are. And it's always a reason to eat it. I mean, it doesn't matter where you go. Somebody's going to give you a reason to eat something or drink something, but you have to just be willing to say no. Yeah. Like I went through a whole trade show season this year, not one drink of alcohol. I don't mind. Like, I don't feel like I'm missing out on absolutely anything. And Oh, and you feel I, so much better. So, oh, and you're tired, but you're not tired and hungover. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. And, but I think that's a lot of it is people just get so far from, and it is such a painful process at first or it can be, you know, you're hard on yourself, you're winded, everything feels at first like it's a struggle. Um, but I'll tell you, like, I um, I went from doing my, my, my normal workouts that I was doing and I wasn't getting a lot out of them anymore. Like I was doing them and it was just very repetitious and I didn't feel challenged. And then I switched over to your guys' program and it was like a breath of fresh air again. Mm -hmm. Like a new challenge, new duration, new new moves. Yeah. But then also what I really liked about it too was like, damn, I feel good. Like I'm doing these workouts and I can walk the next day. Like the other day I did, you guys did six minutes of walking lunges. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. well, it didn't start out with six minutes. We scaled it up. They, yeah. they scaled it up. Yeah. So I was like, I scaled up and, and I ended up doing the six minutes of walking lunges the other day and I had 25 pounds in each hand and I did them for six minutes and the next day I was golden and I'm yeah. like, I literally was like, praise God, <laughs> stuff has happened here and this would not have been me a year ago. You would have been ago. so sore I would have ago. died. Like yeah. last year, what really did it for me is I went home and I had uh, my bilirubin levels in my liver were high. So they put me on a liver watch, which mm. I, well, I'm not like a drinker, right? But I was casual drinking with friends. I don't drink at home, not during trade show season, but from January to the end of show season, I put on 12 pounds eating and drinking. My liver was messed up. My cholesterol was borderline high. My hormones were just jacked up in a mess. And I was like, this is crap. It happens and fast. And 12 months later, and I'll tell you, nobody noticed. I lost 20 pounds by the time I went to Total Archery Challenge in Big Sky last year. Nobody noticed. Nobody said anything. Hmm. But then this year, now I'm coming to these shows and everybody's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like you lost weight. What are you doing? It's like, well, where have you been for 12 months? Yeah. And that's what people have to realize when you start a program like this at first, it's hard and it hurts and you are your own cheerleader. Like there is nobody that's going to be there with you at five o'clock in the morning when your alarm goes off that tells you, good job, Christy, you mm. need to get up today. You know, like you're doing this for you and you don't have like that cheering squad. Like you get up and you grind it out and it goes completely unnoticed and you have to be the only one that you're accountable to. Yeah. 
I mean, like, the hu- we can't out negotiate ourselves. No. Like the human no. brain is terrible to negotiate with. Yeah. So you have to create situations where you're taking negotiation off yeah. of the table. Like quitting is not an option. Negotiation is not an yeah. option. So when people, when their alarm goes off and they hit snooze, that negotiation has already started and you mm-hmm. already lost. Like yeah. it's so difficult to out negotiate our own brain. So you have to create scenarios where negotiation is not going to happen. So it's like, I am going to start this program. I am going to train at the time I said I was going to train. And you have to commit. And then it gets easier every day. It gets easier every day. And then it takes a long time. Like, you don't just step into it and you're transformed overnight. It takes time. It takes a long time. Like, it doesn't, you don't get out of shape instantly. It takes a long time. And it might happen over a 10-year period but it takes time to get there and it takes time to get back Mm -hmm. into shape and and whatever you want to do it's achievable but you have to know that you know two weeks into it you can't be like oh this isn't working for me (laughs) (laughs) like this isn't gonna work even two months into it Mm -hmm. like that's not enough time like you have to give your body time to build the cellular structure, the metabolic structure to repair and rebuild and build these tissues. I mean, you have to think of your body as like a sponge, you know, um, like when you lose muscle or you're out of shape, it's like this like ringed out, like gross little sponge with all this stuff around it. And you have to like firm it up and like trust the like, process. Yeah, you ha- but it takes time. Like a sponge doesn't dry out overnight, right? Yep. It takes time. And so you have to take time to get it back to, you know, what it once was. And and um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that it's so important, like mentally for people, just start wherever you are. Don't make any excuses, just start. Yeah, and just trust the process. Like the process is part of the like great journey. It's yeah. like going, it's the same as going on these amazing hunts. Like the, the day that you harvest an awesome animal yeah. is terrific, but the journey and the destination and the travel, it's the same thing with fitness where it's like, Every day is going to bring new experiences and there's going to be some hard days, but you have to, you have to trust the process that it's taking you in the right direction, no matter what fitness journey people decide to go on. Cause all these things really do build that mental toughness. And we talk a lot at mountain tough that, cause most people think of mental toughness or mental fitness and they think of the military or they think of a sport hero. But really what it is, is it's like the ability to overcome adversity Mm -hmm. and the most mentally tough people in the world aren't your professional athletes. It's your people that just won't let anything in life bring them down. There's like, there's nothing that life is going to throw at them that they're, it's going to hurt, but they're not going to be phased by it. It's not going to bring their life down to rock bottom. They're going to find an optimistic way to continue to grind, to continue to put one foot in front Mm -hmm. of the other, to continue to um, be positive and be there for their like family and friends. And part of getting to that level takes, takes a lot of hard things in your path to get there. And fitness is just such a great tool to get to that level mentally. But then at, at that level you see the difference and it's phenomenal like we were we got the we were really blessed two weeks ago to spend the week training the ranger regiment in georgia so it it's the third battalion of the 75th ranger regiment and so it's some of the most mentally tough individuals in the world and ranger regiment is well known for like manufacturing leaders and these are really young guys some of them are like 28 year olds and they're responsible for like the lives of 80 other guys and they've been through so much mental training and so many hard things that their mental toughness is at that level at that young of an age where there's really nothing in life that's gonna phase them or slow them down and and we saw it in black and white getting to train them because at mountain tough in a big group team workout in person for a lot of years we had this thing that is a false finish trick to to force a mental breakdown on someone so essentially we would lead you in a in-person environment through like one of the most difficult workouts 
of your life and we would get you to push hard that last minute for the finish line. And when you got to that finish line, we would let you know now there's a new finish line. And then when you got there, we would probably let you know one more time that now there's a new finish because we want to create that mental breakdown scenario to learn from it. And we've, we've done that in person in the Bozeman lab over the last eight years, a bunch of different times. And it really like instantly reveals where someone is at mentally because someone who gave like 110% to finish one of the hardest workouts they've ever done. And when they get there and you tell them that it's not over, a lot of times you see they're angry a big mental break that you see crying yeah. you see people yelling at you people freaking out but at ranger regiment we pulled that tactic on those guys and i've never really seen it before at this level but like they didn't even blink actually like when i was telling them about the false finish they started moving and started like doing the second component of the workout without even like pausing to let us finish the description of it mm -hmm. so like their mental fitness is at a level where they're going to do whatever is required to get the job done they're going to do whatever is required to perform at the highest level they can and that that like mental difference between like a civilian and where they're at all came from the discipline of stopping negotiations with yourself like yeah. they just do the hard things they do the training that culture breeds it into those guys but that same culture that they are utilizing to get to that level we can do that same thing as civilians we just have to do it on our own mm -hmm. so we're not going to have we're not going to have that that school that is making that happen but the the same end product can come out of that which yeah. is really cool um, I did a class. I, have you ever heard of Tony Sentiment before? I haven't. So he has a class called Real World, Real World Tactical, and he does it in Florida. And Tony is a big. I think he was a cop. Oh, I have seen that guy. Yeah. So he's, he's huge, jacked, yeah. like a just a behemoth of a man, and he screams at you like right. <laughs> but so it's a combination of a pistol class, defensive pistol tech 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 uh, tactics. Excuse me with workouts. So you go to Florida, Miami, where it's 90 degrees, 100% mm -hmm. humidity. And he sho he shows you and demonstrates and you do some tactics in the morning, like first half of the day you're doing tactics. Second half of the day, you spend hours doing CrossFit workouts. Mm -hmm. So sandbags, whatever. So you're CrossFitting and then you're shooting and CrossFitting and shooting and CrossFitting. So it's a total exhaustion and fatigue drill, I think is what it's called. I'm probably botching that somehow. I can't, it's been since 2017 since I did it. But so you do these workouts, there's people puking everywhere from the heat, from exhaustion, because you're dehydrated, there's all these things going on, right? Yeah. And then you have to shoot your gun. Well then, the last part of it, when you feel like you could die, he brings in two like mixed martial arts experts. And I'm watching these guys like beat these people up, right? And there's a couple other girls in the class and I'm like, oh, they're, they're going easy on them. I'm like, I'm golden and I'm filming this for a show. Yeah. And the guy treated me totally different than he treated the other girl. And like I stepped up and we were, we were hand to hand, like standing at this point and he shoved me on the ground into a, like a cornfield or so. I don't even know what it was like into the weeds. And I got up and something in me snapped yeah. and I was so angry. Like I was coming at him, like trying to hurt him. Like I wanted just to just give me a oh, punch yeah. on this guy. <laughs> I could not land a punch. I couldn't hit him. Like, and he would just kidney jab me. Oh, like, I mean, it was like, brutal. It I'm like, like I'm dying. Like, <laughs> And I was trying to hit him and like, he would like fake jab me in the face. And I mean, like I'd keep coming at him and, but I learned, <clears throat> well, then there was another guy after him that he'd get you on the ground and then he'd pummel you on the ground and he's hitting you on the ground <laughs> and you're trying to fight for your life. So you're simulating fighting for your life. And Tony, the whole time was screaming at you like, don't stop fighting. And you're yeah. ready to puke. And you just, I mean, you're just spent, right? Yeah. Like. And this guy's beating me in my face. And then you have to get up and run over to these barricades and shoot the drill. Jeez, after that? that? 
because he just trained you where to stand by the barricade. Where do you stand by the car? Like, if you are in, like, this true survival situation, are you going to actually remember yeah. how to hold your pistol, where to aim, where do you stand on the You know, how do you protect yourself in this situation? So it's it's, it's crazy. Um, but that was one of the hardest things I've done physically, like, from a training standpoint, that would even be so exhausting. similar. Yeah. Right? And I realized, like, in that moment, <clears throat> I've always thought of myself as, like, oh, I'm tough. Mm-hmm. I'm not tough. <laughs> like, I am a wimp. And if somebody wanted to attack me, and I don't want to say that I'm vulnerable, but I am extremely vulnerable. And I can't land a punch to save my life uh, if you trade. Like, it was so humbling because I thought, I'm going to get one in on oh, this yeah. guy. Oh, yeah. Not a chance. I tried to punch the man. Like, yeah. could not land a punch. And, I, you know, that's where, like, I learned that my firearm is really my, my own first responder. Like, yeah. if somebody really wants to harm me, I can't necessarily, the disparity of strength, I couldn't harm them back, but I was so fatigued and I was so exhausted. And it just takes you to that place of what it takes to be a survivor. Yeah. Right? And, and hunting is not quite that same level, but it is mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> not necessarily fighting for your life, although some people have had that situation. Um, but it, it did. It was it was a crazy mindset experience, and you should go sometime. It sounds try, amazing. Try it. It was yeah, like um, super insane. If you guys want to watch it, it's on my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's like r surviving real world with Christy. But I don't know. Um, it was. It, but the, what gave me, what made me feel the best, and like I survived that class. I did it. I shot. I, I probably made mistakes. I don't really remember. But the guy that was doing the martial arts, um, he's 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 a pretty famous guy. I can't remember his name. He came up to me after the class and he's like, look, I've hit a lot of dudes. Mm -hmm. And he goes, when I would hit you, you never backed away from my punches. He's like, you kept fighting and you never once pulled away or shrinked. He's like, you never quit fighting. He's like, you don't know how many guys I hit and they want to curl up. Yeah. And he's like, you never lost your fight. And he's like, I just want to give you like a props. Like that was the biggest compliment of my life. That is amazing. I was like, yes. Yeah. I did it because, and in my mind, I was so angry. Mm -hmm. Like I can't even explain it. Like I did a deal with Luke Cardillo one time in his gym and I couldn't even hit Luke. I was like, come on, Luke, I can't hit you. Like I wasn't mad at him, right? Yeah. Like he hadn't beat me down. To that anger To level. where I had to feel like I have to survive. And Luke, and like Luke's like laughing, and I'm like, he's like, hit me, hit me, and I'm like, I can't hit you, Luke. You know, I can't. No, I'm gonna <laughs> not hurt mad you. Enough, like yeah. I'm not. I wasn't angry. I was just giggling the whole time, you know. And <laughs> but this was like a whole different deal because I I went there, like, and I think, like, there's per people that go there and move forward, and then there's people that pull back from it. And I think finding a way where you are in that, like. Mm -hmm. Okay, I naturally want to pull back, so how do I force myself to keep pushing forward? You have to. And that's where physical training comes in. It's like, okay, well, if my inclination is to shriek back and hide and give up, mm -hmm. how do I train my mind and my body to be like, no, like, this is hard, but i got to keep going. You and have to. You have to. Yeah. And it, that is discipline. Because I think we're all, we're all like a few steps away from something taking us to that level yeah uh, like there could be a tragic event for any one of us that's gonna bring that fight or flight out and it could be like a car wreck it could be in the backcountry we're always one step away from that being a reality like yeah. it could be uh, the extreme storm it could be the friend breaking a leg it could be the horse breaking a leg and it could be a natural disaster it could be a home intruder we're all very close to that being a reality in our lives, even though like America has never been softer and safer than it yeah. is before. So we lose perspective that that is an actual reality, but we see on the news like every night that it, mm. it definitely can happen to us. And we don't really want to find out where that level is on the day of that event. No. So like the more that we can do in our training to be prepared for that and learn about ourselves the better mountain tough in the early days we still use it all the time now but we started this philosophy of being always ready and always ready actually came from the video footage i watched of the thailand tsunami so oh, the, wow the the thailand tsunami when it hit and all those people died it was kind of one of the first times ever where we had they there was d decent like surveillance footage of that actual wave coming in and 
it was really interesting because it, it was a terrible, tragic natural disaster, and many, many people died. But the people that did not die that day, a lot of them w did not die because of their fitness level. So you can see on the surveillance footage that people started running from the wave and they had to get to like a rocky cliff and climb out. And a lot of the people that climbed out in time survived and the people that did not all die. And it's really interesting to like look at that scenario because there's also people that had the situational awareness to like grab their family and start moving. Some people stalled and some people froze, some uh, people panicked. Horrifying. It, it's horrifying, but like it shows you that like our mindset and our fitness can be really important at a lot of different key times that we just don't know are coming. And so the more that we can like find that red line in training, mm -hmm. finding that red line in the gym mm -hmm. is a great like you don't want to find out what like a max heart rate feels like for the first time in yeah. the back country. If you can find out what it feels like in your gym, then it's not going to create a panic situation when you find it in the back country. Mm -hmm. So all of that, like all of that is like really, really important. And I think it, it's also, I think it's cool to think about what helps a lot of people with mindset is in, in kind of changing their life on a fitness journey. And like what you've done over the last year is awesome and remarkable. And it is so cool because like life is really short super short like we're on this rock for a very very short time and like our our prime years to make an impact are really like 20 to 70 or 30 to 70 where we're like we can actually really get out there and make a positive impact mm -hmm. in the world so you're talking about 30 40 50 years and like the healthier we can be in those years the better and the things that make the biggest impact are usually things that scare the crap out of us. Like the greatest events in our life for most people at the time were really, really scary. Whether that's like starting a business or going on an amazing trip. And so like being mentally and physically ready and just going after those things is really what leads to most life satisfaction. Like we're on mission, we're on purpose. And when you get out of shape and you're in show season and you're drinking way too much like we're muted and we're numb and that it like leads to com complacency and passivity yeah. and so we got to find ways to fight it back against that there are a lot of americans that understand the value of hunting but we all know that right now national support of hunting is extremely volatile it seems that with every passing day, our voice is diminished and the court of public opinion is not effectively hearing our side. We need advocates working on our behalf in Washington, D.C. to defend our freedom to hunt. And thankfully, when we need it the most, we have that advocate in Safari Club International. SCI's world headquarters are located in Washington, D.C., just blocks from the United States Capitol, which means that SCI is on the ground with our congressional leaders and federal agencies on our behalf, on behalf of the hunting community. SCI has an active political presence in all 50 states through their extensive chapter network and government affairs staff. If you have ever wondered why you should be a member of SCI, you shouldn't wonder anymore. Join us in the fight to defend hunting. Go to safariclub.org to learn more. You have to have a, a it has to be systematic. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you're not systematic in your day and you're not structured, I think that's the biggest thing is having a, a discipline and a schedule and adhering to it because People that say, well, I don't feel like getting up this morning. I'm going to work out tonight. They never do it. Mm -mm. Like, I mean, for me personally, if it's after 8 p.m., don't ask me to do anything because I'm <laughs> tired and I'm not doing it and it's not getting done. I'm a morning person. I'm not working out at night. And now in my 20s, no problem. I could work out at night. Mm -hmm. Like, but, And especially, I think it's really important for women to think about, especially as you hit that age of 40, um, Muscle deteriorates extremely rapidly on women and, and maintaining muscle and, and growing muscle and keeping lean body mass is what keeps you alive longer in life. You know, if you have a hip 
uh, you fall and break a hip when you're mm -hmm. 75, 80 years old, it's it can be a very terminal yeah. event yeah. Um, statistically. And if you have good muscles and you're strong and you're less likely to fall, you ha can statistically live a longer life. And for women especially, maintaining muscle, muscle management becomes increasingly important after 40. And I mean, I can't stress that enough, you know, supplementing, I've listened to a ton of hormone podcasts um, on women in, you know, supplementing with creatine, supplementing with DHEA, BCAAs, because we need those protein building blocks to help us repair, rebuild, and keep the muscle we have. Yeah. And a lot of ladies I hear all the time, they're like, oh, how did you get in good shape? Da, da, da. How much cardio are you doing? Well, well yeah, it's cardio, but it's strength. for me it's weight training, yeah. it's strength training, because like it, one does not lend itself without the other. Like you can't just go and do cardio and be strong mm -hmm. and fit. You have to have both. And for me, if I don't, strength training for me is more important than the cardio side. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it progresses me in a fitness journey at an accelerated rate. Plus, if you lift first and then you go do your cardio, you've burnt through all your glucose. And guess what? Your body goes into fat burning zone <laughs> so much faster when you're doing that cardio. So like, it's really important for both. You have to have balance, right? It's not one or the other. It's how do I master like having a, the best of both? Yeah. Yeah. And I always look at people men and women in their 60s and 70s and the difference between those that strength train and those that Tremendous do not difference. it is astonishing well, look around this room yeah it's astonishing the, the guys i don't know how old are you i'm 41 so i'm i'll be 44 this year so the the guys and gals that are our age that don't do those things you can tell yeah like and it it's so hard to build muscle that you don't want to let it go away because like the older you get, the harder it is going to be to yeah, build it, that. And, and it, mentally, it gets harder. Yeah. Because also, you feel a little defeated, right? Like, that's where I was last year. Is I felt so defeated when I got home. I was like, man, I was an athlete on stage at 33, and look at me today. Like, mm -hmm. I was, or last year, right? I was, like, so defeated. I, I have never, I don't think I've been at a lower point physically, um, than I was last year and I was like man this is just not it's not worth it like it's not but you can make the change no matter where you are in that journey like I do you know who Colin Cottrell is yeah dude yeah Colin was a big old boy yeah we did a podcast with him he lost dude, over a hundred pounds his journey like following Colin has it's been insane. unreal and yeah. I don't know you guys google Colin yeah. or look for him on social media if you don't know him Colin had to have been 300 pounds or more, mm -hmm. or more. I, he was a huge man, and he's a big guy anyway. Like he's got big frame. Yeah, like yeah. he's he's got the broad. I mean, he's not a 180 pound guy ever, um, but he's big, broad shoulders, tall, big guy, and he decided to take charge of his life and. He's now running ultra marathons. He did a hundred miler. Yeah, he came to Bozeman to sign up for the Crazy Mountain 100, which is like one of America's hardest hundred milers. It's amazing. And he crushed it. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, yeah. So I, I, it can be. It, it, you're never too late. It's never too. You can always do it, right? It's yeah. not like it's ever not achievable for you, no matter what shape you're in. And everybody's knees hurt. Like, there's a way to work around this. Like, we all have bad knees. I got you. <laughs> like, you know, my mom, she's having a cage put her on her spine. Someone like her, a little bit harder, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I watched a video yesterday um, on Instagram of an 80-year-old woman who was put into a wheelchair. And her son said, you know what? This is ridiculous. There has to be a better way for my mom. And he started taking her into the gym, and she started doing body weight exercises and just like her trainer would put his hand against her leg and like just basic like baby resistance stuff like tiny tiny stuff and a year later she's like standing out of her wheelchair and doing like barbell lifts Man. with like empty barbell like in a year's difference like so awesome. it was on it was the most inspirational thing i've ever seen and like you just have to want it yeah. and it does like i said earlier in this podcast like i can't preface this enough or like stress this enough like, no one's going to cheer you on, and you have to be the one who wakes up every day and makes the decision that you're worth it. Or you can just be like me and just hate the way you look so much where you're like, <laughs> this isn't about self-care. This is about I hate how I feel, I hate how I look, and I hate it enough that I'm going to hate this less. <laughs> how do you feel mentally now, like the last couple months, compared to oh, last it's year? Oh, been, it's been huge. Like, well, and then part of it, too, it's, it's a little bit, it's almost a little bit of... um. 
Like I feel good because I'm strong and I have, and I'm just recovering and I can do anything every day, right? And I feel good about that. But it, there's the flip side, right? So there's the people that when you get heavy or overweight or out of shape that talk about you. But then when you get into shape, there's also people talking about you. Like, you don't even know how many text messages I've gotten from people that are like, um, we're concerned about you. <laughs> and it's like, wait a second. It's like, always something. Yeah. It's, this is the weirdest <laughs> dichotomy of psychology I've ever been involved in in my life. Like last year, everybody's like, well, online, I had guys online that were like, you know, you're getting a little fat. You should lose some weight. And your yeah. husband's not going to like you. And I mean, like men are ruthless. Insane. And then this year, everybody's like, are you sick? Are you? And it's like, no, <laughs> I'm in the same shape I was when I was competing. Yeah. Like maybe not as much muscle, but like in that same shape, like same weight, same everything as I was when I was 33, but people don't remember me 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, they only remember me from last year. And, and so then it's like the opposite. So I feel good, but then you have all these people that are like, make you want to, they're like oh you need to eat a cookie <laughs> it's like actually i don't i'd rather have a steak <laughs> yeah you know what i mean but it, i get that now and it's like no i don't need to go the other way again like you know i don't need to go that way i i you know i've been bringing like when we've been doing the shows my husband's been a super champion like before i work out it's hard there's not a lot of options for food and to order room service egg white omelets is like 50 bucks an omelet yeah so we get yogurt and like in my room, I, I eat a Greek yogurt, which I try to do the no sugar ones, but I'll eat one of those and I'll go do my workout and I come back to my room and I have a protein shake waiting for me in my room. Yeah. I'm not a big fruit eater. I mean, I, I probably should be eating some fruit, but I don't really eat a lot. <laughs> Let's be honest. I'm not a big fruit fan. Um, so I'll, I'll drink my protein shake and then like I have a veggie tray in the back and it comes with like full fat ranch dressing. So I bring light dressing and yeah. I bring baked crackers and I'll bring healthy like, snacks. I bring food here to eat so that I don't have to eat out every day yeah um, or we went to Cheesecake Factory for dinner the other night and everybody said well you can't go to Cheesecake Factory and be on a diet and it's like well I beg to differ with you because I had f grilled fish tacos yeah. and on the menu the calorie portion was 1100 calories or 1080 that's if you eat the rice and beans. It's because it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, so I'm not yeah. going to eat that, but I'm still going to go to the restaurant. And, yeah, and I hang ate out. clean all day long. So I can go to the restaurant. I can have grilled fish tacos. I can enjoy my meal. I can have a Diet Coke and, you know, feel good about myself when I wake up in the morning and start it all over again. I don't have to just throw in the towel. Now, I did have a cookie today because <laughs> I had a really cute little guy, Eli Beckstrand. Uh, he brought me a cookie and I, I mean, I, I'm trying to give them away, Eli, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I did eat a whole cookie. Um, but it's it's both, right? It's learning it's how, how do you have balance? Like, how do you, it's like, okay, I can have the grace to have the cookie today or at Christmas, I'm going to have the dinner or whatever, but Christmas isn't a month long holiday. It's one day. Yeah. Like if on Christmas day, I want to eat anything and everything in sight, I'm going to do it. It's I'm going to eat it deal. all. Yeah. But the next day I might not eat the leftovers. Right. You got to get and, back on the path. You know, your aunt Shirley has to understand that, you know, <laughs> you're <laughs> like, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, it, it can be, you have to have balance. And, um, when I was competing, it was you know, I, I had gotten so far in the gym, like working out on my own and I hired a nutritionist and she was a adventure racer, professional adventure racer. And she trained me and helped me with my nutrition protocol. And then I actually became a certified, uh, I got an allied healthcare and nutrition, yeah. but I'd gotten so far from that. But when I was bodybuilding, I got to kind of where I'm at am now. And if I'd eat one bad meal a week, I wouldn't lose that week. Or I wouldn't make progress that week. Really? One. Or like, I remember one time I went on a hunting trip and I ate an extra apple every day and then that week I didn't lose and she's like what is this extra 100 calories all week with apple like it, it <laughs> like it was it was that finite it was for me that fine tune well because everybody has a different metabolism yeah like you might be able to get away with it my husband can eat or drink whatever he wants yeah and he he's Stays like oh I'm like my abs are showing this morning I'm like okay well <laughs> whatever yeah. you know what I mean like, guys are lucky with that yeah so, and yeah. but for me if I even look at something it could cost me my progress for that week and then when you start seeing results at first the results come easier mm -hmm. and that is one thing like when you start a program the results will be they will come easier and faster like you know I know every wife out there can agree with this their husband goes on a weight loss journey or a fitness program and they lose 10 pounds and the wife's like struggling for two yeah but at first it's easier because you're so much farther from your goal 
But as you narrow in on your goal, it's like fine tuning. It, you have to really get specific with your training, with your nutrition, and 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 for me, it would, you know, down to an apple, right? Like it has to be because my body is that difficult. Yeah. Um, and and you know, like when I get super serious about it, I mean, my food scale lives on my counter at my house. And I weigh and measure my food and I eat on time. Like, I'm like, oh, it's been three hours and I need to eat. And there's a lot of people that do fasting and they, you know, there's so many ways that people want to eat or train or whatever. I do what works for me. Yeah, it's that um, discipline. But it's having that discipline, man. Like, and, and you have to be the one that says, all right, well, this is worth it, right? And don't do this crap where you, like, buy Jenny Craig. My mom does that. It's, like, <laughs> the worst food in the world for you. Like, it will give you cancer, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, it's so bad. Like, don't do that stuff. Yeah. Like, make food. Like, if it's on the inside of the grocery store, don't buy it. Shop the outside. The whole like we, food. Yeah, like, we eat meat and veggies almost every night. Like, whole veggies and, and meat. Like, yep. that's, that's pretty much what we eat. And, you know, during the day, I, you know, I survive on elk tacos pretty much, you know. Um, but everybody's got to find their jam and what works. And, and um, but at the end of the day, you know, in 12 months, you're going to be another year older. Mm hmm and you may as well be a better version of you. Yeah, better every day, every yeah. single and day you if you're feel one percent. And yeah, you know, and you know, whatever. Like it's it's just worth it. And um, I'm really stoked to have, have discovered you guys and in, um, in your program, especially with how much I like working out at home. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna, I'm I'm flirting with the idea of getting a gym membership, just because I feel like it's gonna take me maybe to that next level. Yeah, like. Okay, well, I'm doing really good where I'm at now, but what if I had more equipment? If you get one. Because my butt's pretty small right now. <laughs> let's be honest. My husband's like, you need a bigger butt. And so I got to have some different machines for that. And I'm like, all right, well. Some hip thrusts. Yeah, yeah these little <laughs> kickbacks I'm doing with my 20 pounds on my knees, like hooked in the back of my knees. It's only getting me so far. I got to. Maybe you, you know, that's what you guys need to do is a booty building program. Well, we. The chicks would super dig. <laughs> like, I am subscribing. If you guys do the booty program, like I'm, a, I'm signing up. A mountain tough booty program. Program. I'm not joking. Like <laughs> legitimately, there are there is there is a need for that. Like, yeah, guarantee. I will, I will sign up for the booty program, and I'll be the first one to register and be like, "Hey, you guys, if you're like me and you're suffering from like mom butt syndrome right now, like you need to do this too. Let's do it together." We are launching a gym daily, which is going to be amazing because, like, the minimal gear daily yeah. because it was so popular, being fresh every 24 hours. We, on March 5th, there is one coming out that'll be the Mountain Daily. Okay. And it's a fully coached program with gym equipment. So people will use that like in a robust home gym or taking their phone into yeah. the gym. That's so what I do. I bring it's going it to be awesome. Mm -hmm. So that one, that way you'll be able to use like the squat rack, the barbells, the plates, like skiers, rowers, bikes, treadmills is all incorporated. So people with gym equipment, same thing. It's like we're going to be coaching them live with them. All they need to do is hit play in Mountain Tough and follow along. It's going to be amazing because the, the popularity of the MGD just skyrocketed. And it's because it takes out all – because no one wants to walk into the gym and be intimidated or walk into the gym and – have to think and if you go to the gym without a plan oh it's you're horrible. in big trouble well and that's where i really like the programs right that's why i got hooked on peloton because even though i did bodybuilding forever when i was bodybuilding a lot of times i had a personal trainer two or three days a week yelling at me mm -hmm. uh during that phase of my life or you know at the time i was dating a guy and we were doing bodybuilding shows together so we were yelling at each other and we were like immersed in that culture yeah so it was really easy for me to stay on track and i journaled my workouts i still have every workout journal that i ever did that's awesome like i have them psychotically i still have my nutrition journals from my last <laughs> bodybuilding show on like how i cut sodium or you know whatever i have it all but I don't go to the gym with that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather press play and have you guys think for me. Yeah. Plus your programming. You're like, okay, well, we know this is your goal now. You're not doing a fit figure show. It's for the back country. This is your goal now. So we're going to help you get there because yep. I'm not the expert. You are. Yeah. And you have the other athletes there to like see how they're doing, how many yes. reps they're getting. So that competition, accountability, community. Well, some of your girls are pretty, like, pretty legit. Like, I'm like, There's okay, <laughs> like, I can't do what she's doing. So if she's doing 25 pounds on this, I'm going to back off 
five to ten because <laughs> I'm not her. <laughs> there's some beasts in yeah. there. They're yeah. animals. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Impress- but it's like that's one thing. When I used to CrossFit a lot, my mom used to laugh at me because I would go to CrossFit. And I would come back and I would like lay on the couch and want to puke. And she'd be like, did you win? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> I won. Because I would find like that chick in my CrossFit class that like, there were some girls that were like, they were faster than me. Cause I'm not fast. I'm built for comfort. <laughs> and I'd be like, game on, we're going to do some running stuff. And I'm going to, I might not beat you for the first three rounds, but yeah. by the fifth, the you're going to be, you're going to be smoked. Yeah. And and I loved that. Like, I would go in, and I would just be faster than them, and I had better cardio, and I wouldn't stop. And then at the end of it, I would get in the car, and I'd be, like, shaking, and I'd have to, like, sit there for a minute, like, lean back. I mean, you've been there, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Like, lean back, and you're like, oh, okay, I just got to get home. And then you get home, and you lay on the couch for, like, half an hour, and you want to puke. Oh, and yeah. my mom would be like, but did you win? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> I got her. I almost died. It's but I worth laughed it. her. <laughs> like, and so it's fun to watch these other girls because I can't – I mean, I'm not – Right now, I'm like, no, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you won. I don't even have to. I don't need to try right now because I know you won. I'm cool with that. I'm fine over here on the slow side. But someday. It changes, yeah. There's a point for me where I'm like, I got to I gotta beat this girl. Like, And I remember one time in my CrossFit gym, I lo- this is like a super compliment. This guy looks at me. He's like, I hate you. He's like, you come in here twice a week or whatever. You kick everybody's butt and then you just leave. Like, I was in good shape. And I was like, right on. And they're there all the time. They were there all the time. But I was running trails or, you know, I was was in a lot better condition then. So I I had a dog or I have a dog. He's totally crippled now. But I would go trail run with him. So I would trail run, you know, six miles a few days a week. And then I'd be in the gym a few days a week. And so they would just see me a couple days a week thing and I wasn't doing anything. Yeah. Right? Or didn't realize I was also training at home or in a, like a global gym, like a traditional gym and yep. also training there. And so they, they didn't know, right? Like they just, and that was a huge compliment. But I, you know, I, I'm so competitive. Like if I'm going to do something, I'm like all in. Like the last year, I'm like, well, crud. I was really competitive at eating food for about three years and I did really good at it. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm, you know, a different way. Now I'm getting to where like, man, I want to kind of be, like maybe I have that fire again and still it feels, there, yeah. it's still there. Like yeah. I had thrown in the towel and like, I don't want to say like mentally felt sorry for myself, but I was so defeated by my condition mm-hmm. that I was, I lost all of that. And now it's like back. Yeah. Now I'm like, I'm not, drive. I'm not quite ready to be like, I'm going to go take that girl on. It like It feels mentally, good though to have but that. I'm getting that, there. Yeah. That yeah. drive feels so yeah. good. It's like, and it's like when you, and you, it's the stupidest thing, but when you pick that person out of your gym and you're like CrossFit gym or whatever, yeah. and you're like, I'm going to. I'm going to mentally, I'm going to wreck you today. And you just, (laughs) you're just like, watch out. They don't know you're doing it. And you just go in there and you're like, just for your own personal status. And if you lose, you're like, shit. Like I tried really hard, but they were, they bet. But on those days where you're like, got you. It does take things to a whole new level. But they don't know you're doing it. You can't push that hard by yourself. No. Yeah. No. And that's where the, the gym is good to go. Like I'm not. But I think part of it too, I didn't, I haven't gone to a gym because I've been so out of shape Mm -hmm. that also I don't want to go to the gym and not be that person. Yeah. Now I'm getting back to where like, okay, well I could go to the gym now and like, I could show up at a CrossFit gym and maybe pick that person or start feeling like, I mean, let's be honest, I'm still doing pull-ups with rubber bands. (laughs) 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 I'm not like, like, am I on the the black band anymore, but I'm definitely not band free. I used to be able to kip pull-ups and like do that whole deal. I'm out. I can't do it right now. I'm the banded girl, but that's okay. (laughs) I'll get there again, you know, but it takes time. Like you can't look at where you were when you were a star, star football player or whatever, like be the best where you are now and but it, it, in, in 12 months I can't the, the mental shift has been unreal like, yeah. yeah like you're saying like and I I want to invite all of you guys listening watching like get just do, do something it. yeah 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 like just because it will light a fire in your life like unreal like and I I I also went to the doctor I got b12 injections now that has helped me too like yeah. b12 I was super deficient in b12 and um like the energy I'm getting from that, like, is is good too, and um, that's so important. Yeah, people like running those panels and getting. Yeah, you guys have like a whole lab now at your gym where you're doing like VO2 max testing and everything. Yeah, lactate right? threshold. Yeah. But all of that stuff is like, like you don't want to be tired all day just because you're missing one. Yeah. 
like iron or magnesium. Yeah. I mean, you might as well get that fixed and just yeah. feel so much better. But you're never going to know that's the cause unless no. you get some. Well, and not to out. go into like a whole hormone talk, but I went on testosterone last year too because of other things. It's like I'll have the hormone talk with Tana <laughs> later this week. We're going to talk hormones, but. Um, but that was a big deal for me getting my getting my hormones figured out. And now, like, it's not your doctor will will put women on testosterone, but your insurance won't pay for it. But I really feel like my early life competitive bodybuilding, where I was taking like over the counter estrogen blockers and some of these other supplements yeah. that were performance enhancing, really crushed my body. Your systems, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. now like I, that was a huge attribute. Like I've been on testosterone implant for like it's a pellet they sew into your butt cheek and i've been on that for like a year now almost almost a year and night and day difference in how i feel and it's just everything like yeah you know um and so like if you're struggling don't feel like also like oh i'm just lazy and i'm not working out there could be metabolically something wrong with you like i was low in b12 my testosterone was like really low and like there's there's things you can do. Yeah, yeah, change that game right Whole away. Health. Yeah, so. if you're struggling. Well, I so appreciate you. I could keep talking um, about this all day because it's exciting. Yeah, yeah, it is exciting, especially it's, when you start feeling good. Like you don't want to talk about working out and fitness <laughs> when you don't feel good, right? Yeah. And like, uh, yeah, it's a it's a great feeling for those of you at home. Like, man, just I keep saying it. Just do it. Just get on the bandwagon. Sign up for Mountain Tough. Find a family that you can work out with in your gym, uh, your local CrossFit, whatever it is, whatever you need to do to have like that accountability, but just do it. Like you owe it to yourself and your future. And like in 12 months, you could be completely different than you are today. Yeah. And I think tie it to your identity. That's the biggest yeah. impact we see is like tying it to like, I want to be a great parent for my kids. Yeah. I want to be able to hike with my kids. I want to be able to hike with my grandkids. I want to make an impact in my community, like tying fitness to a big why like that is that's the difference between like starting a program and failing or starting a program and being fit for the next 10 or 20 years. Yeah. And, and for me, like fitness is something I have to live because obviously if I go off the bandwagon, it's way off. Like I have to live it. And that's, you know, my twenties and thirties, I lived it. And then when I went off, it was a big off. And so just flip that switch and do it. And, and um, do you guys don't have any nutrition consulting yet, right? We have nutrition in the app, though. It's okay. like nutrition, education, and fundamentals with Kyle Camp. Okay. So Kyle Camp, he is similar to Colin in that he lost like 100 pounds. Yeah. And he does specific nutrition programming for backcountry hunters and so his whole curriculum is built into the app and it's phenomenal okay and is there an extra charge for that no it's all included all right so you guys get online i'm telling you download the app sign up it's a couple hundred bucks a year was it like 250 bucks a year 239 for the year okay so 230 bucks a year that's so much cheaper than a gym membership (laughs) just do it and get some nutrition help get started on your fitness do an on-ramp program start wherever you are Embrace the suck, set your alarm, and do it. <laughs> Don't negotiate yeah. with yourself. Yeah, yeah. you have to have discipline, and you have to have intentionality in life in order to be successful. And both of those things are very key. So how does everybody find you guys online? So mountaintough.com, and then the app's going to be available in all the app stores as well. Just search Mountain Tough, and then Instagram, Mountain Tough underscore fitness, and then YouTube at Mountain Tough Fitness Lab. Okay. All right, you guys, check it out. And I just want to say thank you for tuning into this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. Thank you to our sponsors, Ruger, Marlin, SCI, Onyx, Wilderness Athlete, all of them. They're, they're great partners of ours. And if you guys want some tremendous discounts, go to my website, go to pursuethewild.com, click the discount tab, because I want you guys to get the best gear you can at the best price possible and shop some discounts there on all kinds of products from some of my great partners. And thank you guys again. And uh, if you like this podcast, please share it with somebody. Um, like it, share it, spread the word, help inspire hopefully somebody else. Awesome. That's it. 
Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram. 